and customer service apprenticeships are a great way of introducing people into your organisation, providing them with the key skills that you need, whilst giving them an opportunity to earn while the, whilst they learn. The rules on apprenticeships have changed significantly. Anyone over the age of 16 can apply for apprenticeship training. This means that for your roles, you will attract young people, but you may also attract people who, for example, are returning back to the workplace or simply want to have a change in their career. The COVID-19 pandemic accelerated existing workforce challenges within primary care. More and more GP practices are therefore considering apprenticeships as a way of retaining staff and supporting their succession plans. The customer service and business admin apprenticeships can provide pathways into non-clinical roles within your practice or PCN. For example, they might develop with further experience into team leading positions or other business support functions such as HR and finance. Business admin and customer service apprenticeships are also an excellent way of helping people to understand what other roles are available within primary care. For example, somebody completing a customer service level two in a receptionist role might become interested in clinical tasks such as phlebotomy. From there, they might be able to then start a healthcare assistant role, eventually helping them to develop into a nursing career. Business administration apprenticeship is usually completed within 18 months. This is a level three program equivalent to two A levels. It provides learners with the skills to plan, organize, prioritize, understand the key functions of a business and work to project methodology. Whilst learning the fundamentals of good business administration with a training provider, as an employer, you get to provide essential skills such as workflow management, bookings, processes, IT packages, and you empower your apprentice to work efficiently with internal and external colleagues. Hi there, so I'm Claire Bloomfield. I'm Project Manager with the Frimley Training Hub. We've recruited a business admin apprentice. So we decided to recruit an apprentice because we had quite, a, quite an extensive growing team and we needed a bit more support. Um, and for us it was a priority to offer an opportunity to someone to learn and develop skills, especially as there are very few experienced administrators out there um, with experience in primary care and working in the NHS. And by creating an apprenticeship role we also save on salary costs. So we met with three providers, all of which were very different. We decided to go with a family run organisation, uh, very experienced and highly successful. We felt that they could meet our needs and they were equally invested in ensuring that our apprenticeship um, was successful and did provide a real opportunity for the learner at the end of the programme. So 20% of the time during the working week is protected for the apprentice to undertake their studies. So to make sure this was organised, time is blocked out in their diary set times every day each week so they can complete their studies and then they know that they have that dedicated time and for myself I know not to put any meetings or any pressure on them during that time. When the apprentice first joined us um, I spent quite a lot of time with them during the first couple of months bringing them up to speed on information about the organisation, working together, getting to know them and what their skills were, arranging some time for them to shadow other members of the team um, and also to go out and spend time in primary care so they could really understand the organisation they were part of. Uh, then as time went on, we moved to have it a couple of one hour meetings a week and now a few months down the line, we just have half an hour protected catch up once a week and then we just pick up other bits and pieces as they need my time. As a team, we share the mentoring between us, which provides an excellent opportunity for the apprentice to work with people with different skills 
and also for us it, it shares that pressure of the, of the time that may be needed. The time spent mentoring and supporting the apprentice very much depends on the individual and the skills they bring with them. So some may just need a short, a short bit of time each week, others might need a little bit more attention to help them build some skills and knowledge in other areas. Our apprentice has now been with us for six months and we are starting to see real benefits to her role and she's become an asset to the team. Uh, one of those areas is so our various projects have finances linked to them um, and previously people were able to pick up actions between themselves but this is now all filtered through our new apprentice so we have a really smooth process with raising purchase orders, checking invoices and making payments um, and that's provided the team with more capacity and we've just got a smoother process for managing all the finances. We were a very small team um, and as the team started to grow, everybody got used to working in their own ways, although we were an excellent team together. Um, and by bringing in our apprentice has really helped pull that team together, smooth out some of our processes and has really helped us reflect on some of our ways of working. And for us it's been fantastic to inspire and support someone that had previously worked in the NHS and is now thinking of a long-term career in primary care. And it has been such a success that we are now recruiting another apprentice. Working with an apprentice does require a level of patience because you do need to spend the time training and helping them make sure they've understood and embed anything that you're supporting them with. But also it's had good advantages for me because we get so used to working in set ways that it's not until you have to pass that knowledge on to someone else that you actually break it down and you reflect on your ways of working and think, well, do I necessarily need to include that? Or are there ways that I can improve? So if you're considering recruiting an apprentice, go for it, you've got nothing to lose. The experience has been absolutely fantastic, but spend the time in the beginning to make sure that you recruit the right person and that you work with the right trading provider. So right from the outset, it's just such a fantastic experience and runs nice and smoothly. And for you and for the apprentice, everybody gets what they expect out of it. There are two customer service apprenticeship programmes. The level two customer service practitioner is a 15 to 18 month program. And the level three customer service specialist can take between 18 to 24 months. The level two program is a good standard to use to train someone into a receptionist role. The apprentice will learn the fundamentals of organisational values and behaviours, communication skills and handling challenging situations. The level three program provides skills for more complex customer service scenarios, including case and complaints handling. The apprentice should be able to impart their knowledge as a customer service experienced individual, um, support colleagues within your organisation and consider how processes for customer service can be improved. My name is Rhiannon Leversatch. Um, I'm 22 and I studied a level two apprenticeship programme with Fleet Medical Centre Surgery. I chose to do this course um, because once I had finished college, um, which I completed uh, three A-levels at, um, I knew I didn't want to go to university, but um, I knew I still wanted to continue learning. So um, I was one day just um, at my GP surgery. Um, at this point, I was still deciding um, on what I would like to do next. Um, and I was watching a GP receptionist just do her job. And I thought, oh, that might be quite an interesting way to go. And later on, I looked at the um, government apprenticeship site and saw that there was a GP apprenticeship um, receptionist available, a position available as an apprentice. So I applied for it. Um, I went to the interview. Um, <laughs> I think I did quite well because by the end of that day, I was offered the job um, and I started the job as a receptionist and later on began my apprenticeship.
during my apprenticeship, I learned various um, different skills, such as learning how to deal with the general public, um, for example, how to deal with angry patients or, or happy patients, um, how to adjust how I speak to people, um, depending on, you know, their their mood. Um, I also learned various IT systems, which helped me land uh, my next two roles. Um, for example, those systems were EMIS um, and the Microsoft programs. Uh, I use these uh, daily in both my current role and my previous role, after both of which were after my apprenticeship. <music> One of the biggest challenges throughout my apprenticeship, I believe, was probably the fact that you never knew what was going to happen that day, especially in a GP surgery. Um, it's quite an unpredictable environment, um, so you have to be ready to be to deal with anything that walks through the door. Um, luckily, I was um, very much supported uh, by my manager um, and higher um, up managers, so. Um, I was able to um, complete my apprenticeship and gain invaluable skills, which I take with me throughout, not just my um, work life, throughout my personal life now as well. And I believe that I will use throughout the rest of my life. A couple of key benefits, in my opinion, of apprenticeships, um, one very much being the earn as you learn feature. Um, it was very important to myself that I was able to have an income whilst also still learning. Um, so that was great, um, in my opinion, it would be that the character development that especially young people will get from going straight into the world of work is great. Um, I wouldn't change what I did for anything if I could do it all again. Um, it was great experience um, and I'm really happy that I did it. The benefit of apprenticeship, you can shape the program to make sure your apprentice is gaining the relevant knowledge, skills and behaviors within the parameters of the apprenticeship standard. Once our apprentice understands the fundamentals of the role, they start to become beneficial to your practice. On completion of the apprenticeship, you will have an experienced employee ready to progress to the next level. It is essential that you create a support environment for your apprentice. The ideal way to achieve this is to involve the whole team in their development. For example, who is a natural organizer, who has the best IT skills, who understands primary care extremely very well. Allow time for your apprentice to have their training. There are minimum requirements for your apprentice to have what's called off the job training. Currently, that's set at six hours per week. Some providers offer weekly or monthly group workshops. Others will provide one to one tuition. Select the program that suits your needs the best. But bear in mind, these six hours can be achieved in different ways. And there are documents available on the government apprenticeship websites to help you understand what of the job training looks like. You might want to consider taking someone on from a pre-employment program, such as work experience, or a traineeship, for example. See how they fit within your team um, and the role itself, and then offer them the apprenticeship program. Consider the apprenticeship salaries in your area in line with the cost of living. Consider your intention for this role. Do you want to recruit someone that will stay with you? In which case, a permanent contract might be more attractive. Which age group do you want to target? There are incentives for recruiting young people. Bear all of this in mind when considering the salary that you want to set for your role. Your apprentice must have a contract of employment or the duration of their apprenticeship. As an equal partner in your apprentice's training, you commit to providing regular supervision and mentoring. For these programmes, 
business administration and customer service. There generally isn't a set requirement for supervision, but it's important to maintain regular contact with both your apprentice and the training provider to make sure that you are able to provide the relevant experience at work and training at work that will help them meet the standards within their apprenticeship programme. The three key essentials to success. Recruit wisely, select a good quality training provider and stay interested in your employee's journey as they progress through their apprenticeship. Keeping someone motivated is probably the single most important factor to the success of their apprenticeship. The funding bands for the business admin and customer service apprenticeships are up to £5,000. As a non-levy payer, small employers can receive a levy transfer from a levy paying organisation, or you can apply for government co-funding, meaning that you only pay 5% of the fees. This applies to small employers who pay less than £3 million in their employment salary costs. All apprenticeship programmes require functional skills in maths and English. If you achieved a grade C or a 4 in new money in GCSE, you'll need your certificates available. If the thought of having to study these qualifications worry you, please don't. You're not alone. There's a lot of support available to help you achieve these qualifications, often with funding available. <laughs>